Hey everybody, this is Miss Amy here. Thank you for joining me for another fun art project. Today we are going to create this fun little frog. And the reason the frog doesn't have a lot of details is because this is from a perspective of underneath the leaf. So it's like you took this big leaf and you picked it up and looked underneath of it and saw the frog, just the silhouette of the frog sitting on top of the leaf. So I'm gonna show you how to create this really fun project. All right, first of all, you will need some watercolor paper or mixed media paper. So I have my piece of watercolor paper here. You will need some watercolor paints, a brush, a cup of water, some paper towel and some Sharpies. Now I recommend the regular fine Sharpie, just a normal Sharpie, but also a, rear, a fine point, extra fine point Sharpie, or you could use a black uh, writing pen would work also for that because we may need to make some really fine little lines. So we need to use that for that. And then a hairdryer to make our process go a little faster. Um, please note that if you, you need to get a parent's help with the blow dryer, especially if you've never used one before, definitely get some help with that. So let's get started on this fun project. So we're gonna start out and create, in my example, we're seeing the whole leaf, the whole leaf. It's like a close up view of this leaf. And so the whole paper is going to be, the leaf is gonna cover our whole paper. So we just need to fill it with some color first. And we're gonna do that by using watercolors and we're gonna use the wet on wet technique. And I like to use this technique because it gives um, nice a little bit darker and light areas it actually looks like the light is shining through the top of the leaf a little bit and so i have some lighter and darker areas and i used green and yellow to create that and i left some areas i didn't put as much paint and that left some little lighter areas too so we will do that right now so you just get your watercolor paints out and i'm going to go ahead and just get some water on my brush and put some water in my yellow to start activating it and some water in my green. All right, so for wet on wet, what we're going to do is we're gonna paint our paper with water first, then we're gonna add the paint to that. So I get make sure my brush is all clean. I get some water on my brush. Now I'm, I don't usually wipe it off for this because I want lots of water on my brush. So I'm just gonna paint some water in a little section to start with. It doesn't have to be a perfectly square section. I just quickly brush on some water, make sure my paper is real, real wet in that area. Um, the reason I do a small area at a time is because where I live, this paper dries out very fast. So I, if by the time I would get the whole paper covered with water, it would be dry. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little section at a time. Go ahead and get lots of paint on my paintbrush and just tap it in the water, kind of tap my brush and let the, let the paint kind of go where it wants. And if it's not doing that very well, you may need to add a little bit more water to your paint. And then what I do also is once, it's, once I tap it on there, I'll take more water and just kind of push it and help the paint find its way around a little bit too. So I do both of that. I tap it in there. I don't want to just brush like this because I don't want it to look streaky. I don't want it to have those straight brush marks. I want it to have this. Um, see on this paper, you see there's no brush marks really. It's just a, a collection of paint. And so it doesn't look like there's brush marks at all. And that's why I like to do it this way also. So I'm gonna get some green and then I'm gonna add a little bit, clean my brush. I'm gonna start add just a little bit of yellow in here and you can mix them together. That is fine. Mixing the colors together a little bit. Cause we just want hints of yellow. We don't want 
lots and lots of yellow. We just kind of want it to be a hint of yellow in there, some yellowish green on our leaf, like a bright spring green leaf. Okay. So once I have that filled with paint, I'm gonna actually add some more water and I'm gonna overlap my areas. So I'm gonna brush a little bit of water in the area that I just put on there and then br bring it down. And it's okay if the paint leaks into that, that is okay. You want the paint to mix. You want the paint to travel where it wants. And see all my paint's starting to travel a little bit. That's perfectly fine. I kind of want it to do that. So you do want to make sure you overlap a little bit. So I'm going to add some more green. So you can see the paint moving a little bit, finding its own place to go in the water. Sometimes you need to help it just a little bit. And I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow in there. Just give it that nice spring green color. Just a tiny bit of yellow. Now I don't want to mix all my green and yellow together. As you can see, I haven't mixed it all. I just kind of randomly mixed it in there a little bit. It's looking good. And then I'm going to add some more water overlapping the area I just got done doing. And I'm going to bring that right to the bottom of my paper here. Now you don't have to be quite as careful neat when you're painting on the water you just can put it on just make sure that you've got enough water for your paint to travel a little bit go ahead and get lots of paint add some more paint in here so i've got some green i'm going to add some yellow in here fill in kind of fill in some of those spaces now it's okay if you have a little bit of white light colored see I have some light areas that's okay remember on our original picture there we want to make it look like it, the light is coming through the leaf so we those lighter areas are good not necessarily white paper showing through just some lighter areas where the paint is not as thick and it's not it's covering as much all right, so I'm going to start up here next where I did, and I'm going to overlap because my paint is slightly dried just a little bit. So when I add some water in there, it'll help it to blend and be move around again. So I'm going to go ahead and just paint, paint some water in this whole section here. Go ahead and get some paint on my brush. So make sure your brush is wet when you get some paint on there too. You want to have everything be nice and wet. Get some yellow going here. This is one of my favorite ways to use watercolor because you can do so many things. It makes some great backgrounds. It makes a great sky water, clouds, lots of cool backgrounds if you want to create a background for something. Kind of what we're doing today. A close leaf. All right, so I'm going to overlap. I'm making sure to overlap my water just a little bit onto the other parts that I've um, already painted. So then my paint can start to travel into that area. Add a little yellow in here. Almost finished with this. All right, one last area here. And I'm making sure I overlap, adding in a little bit of green and yellow there.
So you want your colors to mix so that you don't have like a square area of green and a square area of yellow and a square area of green. You want your colors to be kind of mixed together so it looks random, not like a pattern. So I like how this looks. I don't really have a pattern there. So that is good. I'm trying to avoid this because I want it to be natural. Now I have quite a bit of water on my paper. It's kind of puddling in some areas. So what I like to do is just take my paper towel bunch it up a little bit and just kind of soak up some of that extra water and it also will give a little more texture to my paper. Um, let's see there's some little areas and that will help a little bit when you go to blow dry it. So for blow drying our paper if you don't have a blow dryer you would just have to wait you know wait you might have to wait up to 30 to minutes half hour to an hour maybe till it's completely dry um, you don't want to do the next step why it's wet at all you want to make sure it's completely dry so we're going to use a hair dryer because that will speed up the process quite a bit that will be dry in a couple minutes rather than an hour so um, what we want to do is when we're blow drying our paper we want to make sure that we do not ever touch the blow dryer directly on the paper. We want it above the paper and make sure that we don't put our hand in the way. So please get a parent's help um, before you do this, especially if you're younger and have never used a hair dryer before. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry this real quick. It'll only be a minute or two and it'll be all dry for me. See, that didn't take long at all. Now it's completely dry and I can go on to my next step. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our Sharpies now. And I'm gonna use my little bit bigger Sharpie. I'm gonna create, usually a leaf has a main vein. The, the veins are what bring nutrients to the leaf. So I want, I'm gonna make two main veins that come up into the leaf. Remember, we're looking at the leaf up close, so we aren't gonna see the whole vein the whole big one, it's going to run off our paper a little bit. And I like this direction of uh, the way that it's kind of at an angle. Um, it just looks really nice on the paper. And so I'm going to do it, go ahead and do it that direction. Plus, I imagine a big leaf and it has a couple veins running up the, the center of the leaf. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and start by just creating a one, one line on the corner of my paper, just like that. And then I'm gonna I go drop down just a little bit and run another line on the bottom side. Kind of parallel, kind of a reflection of that light, of that line there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna thicken it up a little bit. I'm gonna run a parallel line. Parallel means it runs right next to the other line and it doesn't cross over the line. That's all that means. 
And then I'm going to fill it in with my marker. Just color that in with my marker. I just want it to be a little bit thick, not super thick, because um, they're veins. And I don't think veins are a little smaller. They're not like super, super thick. So run my parallel line and then color that in. There we go. You can always adjust it a little bit with your marker. There. So we've got our two main veins, and now we're going to set our big, our regular Sharpie aside. For right now, we're going to pick up a really small, extra fine Sharpie, or this is where you want to use your black pen if you have a pen instead of an extra fine Sharpie. Now I'm going to show you my example. We're going to make the smaller veins that come off of the big veins. And that's why we're using our really small Sharpie. So I'm just gonna set that aside here. And so I'm just gonna start with my big vein and I'm just gonna make a vein, and it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, coming off and I'm gonna run it off my paper that way. And then I'm gonna run another one going this way. And then going up my vein a little bit, I'm gonna do another vein and I'm gonna make it across from the vein. I'm gonna do it across from the vein. And so I'm gonna keep going up like this. And then this one is, you can't, it's going off the paper. This one may go off the paper that way. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this uh, bottom vein. And then this one, <clears throat> it's just gonna meet up with that one for right now. And we're gonna do this one. We're gonna cross it over just a little bit. Now your veins may look just a little bit different than mine, that is okay. Different leaves have different, le uh, different uh, vein patterns and that is okay. All right, so we want to um, maybe run these off a little bit longer. Run this one up. And I'm just going to run that one all the way off my paper, all the way off my paper that way. It's okay if they cross a little bit. So now we have the veins coming off our main one. Now we're going to make some smaller veins coming off our main, our big, our, these second ones that we drew. So all we want to do is draw some veins going off of those. And we're doing the same thing. We're just doing them across from each other. Just like we did on the big one. We'll do the same over here. And we're gonna do, let's see, this one. Can get kind of confusing here a little bit, but that's okay. We're going to just and I'm not making them perfectly straight. I'm curving them. I'm making just a kind of a little bit of a curve line. To me, that looks more like a vein than a perfectly straight. If yours are perfectly straight, though, that's okay. You can do it that way too. Keep continue doing that. So every vein that I made of the bigger ones, I'm just trying to make small ones come off of that, those, and they run into each other, that's okay. <laughs> That's looking great. So, and on this vein, I haven't made any coming off of there.
And I think I missed a couple right here. Oops, I didn't finish this one. There we go. And let's see. I think I may need some down here. And this one I missed here too. There we go. So I have some all veins running all over my leaf and so now it's time to add our frog in there and so i just did the out the silhouette of the frog and colored it in black because you're just seeing the bot the silhouette of the frog through the bottom of the leaf so i turned my paper just to make it a little bit easier to draw my frog now if you want to have them pointing the opposite direction that's okay um you don't have to do it the same direction as me but what i start out with I start out with my shape, so it's kind of a curved line, and then it gets narrow toward the back of the frog, and then it's a little more wide, to so almost looks like a light bulb, just a little bit, and there's kind of his nose there. So I'm going to go ahead and just color that whole shape in nice and solid black. I think I might get, need to get my other Sharpie out. So when you're coloring with a marker, any marker, you want to just color lightly. You don't want to push down really hard because you'll get a much better amount of ink coming out your tip of your marker. If you use a lighter, don't push down so hard. And then it doesn't damage the tip of your marker either. If you notice markers that have a tip that's all spread out, that means someone was pushing down too hard when they colored with it. So we want to make sure we're not doing that and our markers will last a lot longer for us. All right, let me check my other marker just to see. Sometimes they run low on ink and then, yeah, that one's a little better here. There, get that all filled in. I don't want to have lots of paper showing through. I want a nice solid black color. my silhouette of my frog. All right, that's good. So then we're gonna draw his um, back feet. So what I do is I start near where this is like his little tail there and I just make a curve line. And then I'm, um, so it looks like a backwards J almost. And then I just make three toes. And then I come back to his body, just like that. And you can adjust the size by adding more. That's why I start out with less because with a Sharpie, you can't take, you can't erase or take away. So you start with less and you add more if you need to add more. And that, that way you can make changes by adding more rather than by doing too much at the beginning and then having, you are not able to erase it. So that's it. That's a little tip for coloring and drawing with marker. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, make a little curve line, come up, make three lines off the end of that and then come back down. And then I can add a little more to my frog. And little toes, these are the little toes. That's what's helping him grip onto the leaf above is those sticky little toes there. All right, so see, I'm gonna add a little more there just as I feel like it needs a little bit more there. Okay, I'm gonna add his front legs. So I'm gonna start here this is his head, so I don't want to put his legs way up here. I want to start him back on his body, where his body would be. So I'm going to make that same curved shape, but a little bit 
uh, farther away. See how close his back legs are to his body. The front legs are a little bit smaller, stretched out. So I'm gonna just um, make those. Let me make the toes first. And they have four toes up here. So I'm gonna make those four lines and then I'm gonna thicken it up. So I'm gonna make that wider. Remember to start out with less. You can add, always add more with a marker. So I'll make those little stickies on the end of his little suction cups on the end of his toes there. And then this one, then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Start with one line, curve it around, make the four lines coming out the top and then thicken it up. And it makes it look like he's sitting on top of the leaf. Just make sure you color in nice and dark. Not a lot of paper showing through. There we go. It's a cute little frog sitting there. And I might make him give him a little bit more of an elbow there. There. There's a cute little frog sitting there. So that's all there is to it. Um, you now have a great little picture here. It looks like you're looking at the bottom of a leaf, looking up at the silhouette of a frog. So thank you so much for joining me for this fun frog project. So uh, please send me a photo of your finished project. I really enjoy seeing uh, students work. And so thank you again for joining me today. Bye-bye.